right, welcome back to another episode of Light Beer, Dark Money. I'm Sean Noble. And I'm Chris Clements. And we are really privileged today to have a very special guest from the great state of Pinal County. <laughs> Otherwise, I thought that was the great state of Maricopa. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> listen, when it, when it comes to growth and it comes to expansion and it comes to freedom, which is one of our themes here at Light Beer, Dark Money, there's, there's no better place than Pinal County and the great city or town of Casa Grande. And our guest today is uh, Craig McFarlane, the mayor of Casa Grande, who is a long friend, long-standing friend of mine, and he was good enough to come on this podcast so we can abuse him for despite, a little bit. Despite that. Huh? Despite that. And, <laughs> despite and, and, and that friendship comes from a, a long history in the beer industry, um, both with Anheuser-Busch and, and my former life at Golden Eagle Distributors. That's right. That's right. I was a beer guy. So we're doubling up on the beer today. Yeah, we that's are. Right. This this is part of the light beer theme, right? Yep. That's right. That's right. We can it's go light beer, we, dark beer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, I think we we asked something that we agree on that like light beer is you know better than dark beer. No. Oh, <laughs> no it's not, not really. dark. Okay. Not really. So light beer is the, this inferior beer. Um, it's not inferior. It's just not it's as a, good. It's just an option. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. It's options. a session. You like options. That's right. You gotta, like have, when, you gotta have options. It's like when APS did their uh, campaign a few years ago, options with a Z, and I was like, APS, what kind of options do you, you pay with a credit card or a check? I mean, I don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, the options. option is getting cut off. <laughs> right. Um, well, Craig, thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah, really absolutely. Thank, thank you both. I Making the trek on yeah. I-10, the most treacherous stretch of I-10. The most dangerous section of I-10, I think, in the country. Yeah, easily so. Is that right? We're working on that. Yeah. I didn't realize that. It's is this still just two lanes at, at some points? Four, four lanes total, or, two, yeah, two, two each way. way, for 26 miles. That's insane. Actually, I-10 yeah. is one of the most important arterials across the country, and we've got two lanes in each direction for 26 miles. Well, and there's a reason for that, and, and you guys have been working on that. That's true. There is a reason for that. It happens to be uh, tri all tribal land, so all 26 miles of it, and we're working on getting it widened. We are working with the tribe, so the Gila Indian River community is actually uh, whose land it's on, mm -hmm. and it's actually just a uh, it's it's a, it's a right of way. It's not even a it, it's not even owned by the state, so it is it's it's still part of the tribe. So they have to agree to everything that uh, happens on their land. Right. Right. Yeah. So well, it's, well, they it's can't been a long be happy process. with all the accidents that happen between Phoenix and Casa Grande. No, and, no. And actually, five years ago, when I first became mayor, I actually went and visited Governor Lewis, mm -hmm. and we had a good conversation. And he explained to me their biggest fear, and that is when there is an accident, because what happens is all the traffic goes out onto their land, yeah. right, and causes all kinds of problems. So it's in their best interest that we get this widened as well. Yeah. Plus, they're going to get some new interchange. So there's some give and take, and they're going to get some good out of it. Yeah. Is, is there going to be a new frontage road? Is that planned at all, or is that too much? Is that a bridge too far? R right now it's a bridge too far because <laughs> they, then they would have to give up additional land yeah. for that to happen, and uh, I don't think they're in for that. Mm -hmm. But they are in for uh, a new interchange. Uh, I think Seed Farm Road will be a new interchange, and then they're going to lose one, but they don't use it anyway. Uh, and then they're prob probably going to redo uh, Casablanca as well. The, that right now the, they call those suicide exit lanes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So they're going to redo that. So it'll be more a standard, standard interchange. Totally redoing Riggs and also uh, Wild Horse Pass. So, so there, there's a lot going to so go on. It's about six hundred and seventy million dollars. Yeah, getting prepared for more uh, casino traffic. You know, they've got a sports book and that kind of stuff. So you know, good for them. Well, it's long overdue. Yeah. Every right. time, every time I'm in that traffic, I, I, I feel like tweeting at the Gila <laughs> River community. And I think we average at least one accident a week on that road. Oh, easily. Yeah. Wow. That's but but beyond that, I mean, Casa Grande is booming. We are. We're, we're on fire. So uh, if my hair looks like it's on fire, that, <laughs> that, that's why. Well, you have one of, uh, so my kids right now, for whatever reason, they're, they're obsessed with Teslas. They're like, Dad, we want to buy a Tesla. And you Why should. can't we have a Tesla? You should get a Tesla. However, we no, have no, you one need to of get a one, one, a well, yeah, we have an electric car point. company here in in the great state of Arizona in Casa Grande. I keep telling them, I said, no, we want to keep it local. It is the first Greenfield electric vehicle manufacturing plant built in North America. Mm. 
Wow. And it's so in, what does that it's mean? It's in Casa Grande. Greenfield means from the ground up. Okay. It wasn't a factory that was abandoned and then repurposed. So it, it was built from the ground up uh, with total, total new design, total technology. Uh, Lucid will tell you they are a technology company first and a car company second. Hmm. So the technology that's in this Lucid vehicle is absolutely amazing. Uh, when you hit the acceleration, it gets from zero to 60 in 2.3 seconds. It, this Lucid Air, which is the first vehicle they're producing, has almost 1,100 horsepower hmm. with two electric motors. So this uh, is the, the, the guy who started Lucid is a former Tesla engineer. Correct. Yeah. Well, he was one of he's one of the first employees. Uh, yeah. I'm sure he started Lucid because it actually was a different company, and then they changed the name to Lucid, um, and that's when they decided to be, be a car manufacturer. Before they were a technology company, so they were making these batteries, they were making these motors, and then they decided they could do it better than Tesla. Yeah. Uh, and this vehicle is amazing because actually, when it decelerates, it doesn't. You don't hit a brake. It just decelerates, and the Calipers in the in the wheels actually recharge the battery. So right. you have one. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I but give you've you driven one. I I have the first ones. The first ones out on the market are, are right around one hundred sixty nine thousand yeah. dollars. So little, it's a, little a bit out of my price range. Yeah, but oh they my. now the, especially the, on a mayor's salary. Right, <laughs> right. I think that Lucid is going the high end to start. Yeah. But then they they're going to go to a lower end. They're well, actually low gonna end is going to be sixty nine thousand. Oh, sixty nine. So I thought that they were going to try to undercut. The Model Three from the Tesla, which is a little bit less than that. Yeah, yeah. I um, think I it'll think be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, I think they're still going after the high-end market. That's their primary market. Well, they have but a beautiful showroom just near here where we're broadcasting from at, at uh, Scottsdale Fashion Square. And yeah, they have an uh, interesting car experience that you can go through. You know, th through the virtual car experience. Yeah, they delivered their first uh, ten vehicles this past saturday oh no kidding. so yeah so that that, that, that was, was there a, like a, a monumental groundbreaking sort of celebration they had a big celebration but it was in california at their uh, headquarters their headquarters okay. are in california so what 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 went into making them want to come to cast grand well they looked all over the country and uh, settled on about six sites and then went and did a bunch of site visits uh, to those locations and ultimately decided on Casa Grande. And primarily because of its location, uh, we have uh, the Union Pacific Railroad main line. We have I-8, uh, which is a direct connection to California. We also have I-10. Uh, and we have uh, the, the land uh, that they could, they could uh, put this plant on. They, they sit on about 550 acres today. They are about a million square feet right now as we speak, and they've started phase two, and phase two is 2.8 million more square feet. Wow. wow. And when they're done, it's five million square feet of plant. Wow, that's amazing. 6,000 employees by the time we're done. Right now, today, we sit at about 12 to 1,300, probably 1,500 by the end of the year. So kind of, kind of puts Casa Grande on the map. Oh, no, no, no question. Um, I mean, the growth has been... so. <clears throat> what what other things? I mean, probably can't talk about a lot of these, but I got to believe that this will spark additional companies coming into Casa Grande. I always called it growing up in Shola was Casa Grande. You know? <laughs> there, there's two ways two ways <laughs> the to say it. Call it Casa Grande. <laughs> you yeah, know, the, the, you, have, the, you can call it Casa Grande, and really not a D. It, it no, just kind of ends right. Casa it just goes Casa Grande or Casa Grande. <clears throat> yeah, the mayor so calls it Casa Grande. Casa I'm not going to roll on the R's. That's the problem. Yeah, I get criticized by my locals sometimes when I when <laughs> I'm I sure say the old farmers are like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's standing well, joke. It's, I mean, most people come into town, they go, "All right, is it Casa Grande, <laughs> Casa Grande, or Casa Grande?" I say, "It's, it's any way you want to say it." <laughs> We're happier here. Right? Either way, it means the big house, and either That's way, right. it's kind of living up to its name because it's I mean, just the the growth is tremendous. It's it's become the big house. Yeah, we yeah. we will issue over 2,000 building permits, home new home building permits this year. And that's a, about a 70% increase over last year. And last year was probably a 100% increase over the year before. So it's building. Yeah. Um, right now, we have probably 15 builders in town. We've got 3,000 apartments coming. Um, so wow. it's, it's, really, uh, it's, it's really 
exploding right now. So we're you're we're trying to keep up with with our infrastructure. I'm so sure. it's, that, that's the biggest challenge. Today. And you're about 55,000 people well, as of 2020 and 58, and 2020. 58 and, yeah, so and now we estimate we're about 62 now. Wow. Man, that's amazing. Next 10 years probably 100. So maybe another 40,000 in the next 10 years. And, and and the migration is it mostly Californians? Is it mostly is kind of all over the place? It's really all over. We we've, we've seen uh, a lot of California. Yeah. Um so a lot of Phoenix and a lot of uh, Oregon, Washington. Mainly West Coast. Mainly okay. Some Texas Escape. actually. Tex some Texas which hmm. is I found interesting. That is interesting. And they've and they've also uh, hired people out of Michigan, you know, from the Detroit area. So there's uh, there's some Detroit folks that have moved into town that work for Lucid. Right. Right. So is Lucid now pretty much the largest employer in California? They are. They yeah. took over from Walmart. Walmart Distribution and their store were about 1,100, so they're sitting at around 13 right now. I expect that to be 15 by the end of the year, and probably in the next 18 months, close to 3,000. So it, it's going to be rapid. They have uh, they had they had some uh, employment shows. They had one in Tempe last mm -hmm. weekend. Um, they had one in Casa Grande. So they've made offers to about 300 more employees from that from those two wow. meetings. From the, so the, from the I, fair, that's good. From the job fair, yeah. So being mayor of Cass Grand, like, what is your role in all this? What is your role in supporting them or, or supporting new businesses coming in? And then there's got to be issues with this all this growth. Certainly, the I-10 is the biggest issue. Okay. And all the traffic that tr we have a tremendous number of trucks coming in and out of town which creates more traffic on I-10. We have a whole you know, 2,000 new homes. If you times it by 3.5, you can do the math and figure out how many new people that is. So grocery stores, pressure on grocery stores, pressure on our streets, uh, pressure on our truck traffic, and really uh, education system w isn't prepared either. Yeah. So we're running into situations because we have the capacity, but they don't have the teachers. Same thing with our hospital. We have the capacity, but they don't have the nurses and the folks who work in, in the nursing centers and the, ta and the care centers. So it's backing up everything in our hospitals even. So it's, it compounds itself. It's a great problem to have. I mean, we're, we're, we're grateful for all the new business and industry, but most people don't realize how much industry is in Casa Grande. It's, it, we have about 31 manufacturing facilities in Casa Grande. Everything from Frito-Lay, Abbott, Hexel, um, LKQ, which is a, the world's largest recycler of auto parts, Tractor Supply, Walmart Distribution, now Lucid, Lucid being obviously the biggest, mm -hmm. but now there's ancillary businesses that are following them sure. to Casa Grande. We're also seeing an effect from the TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor facility that's being built in North Phoenix. Mm. We have two or three of their suppliers that are actually moving to Casa Grande. And, that, and that has mostly to do with, with land, I would imagine. We have the land. And yeah. I think w if you talk to any developer here in, in the Phoenix metro area, uh, they're out of land. So the logical next place is to come down to, Pon you know, come into Pinal County. So it's, you know, it's Coolidge, it's, it's Eloy, it's Casa Grande. Florence, you know, so those are the areas that we're seeing a lot of growth in the county. Uh, even Maricopa, Maricopa is starting to get some industrial. They they don't have it yet, but they're working on it. I read or heard um, the other day that Maricopa is uh, looking to the state to do a land swap. Have you heard that? No. Yeah, because there they're, because they're they're so landlocked and they can't grow. Well, they're landlocked too because of the tribes. Yeah, they have two. You know, they've got Akchin and they also have the Gila on the north side. So they're kind of landlocked because of the tribes, not so much the state. Uh, there may be some state trust land that they're looking at. I yeah. Don't, I don't know. I heard that the other day. Interesting. What, uh, what's the, how big is the, is the uh, footprint of Casa Grande uh, as far as just your our plan city, our city pl boundaries? Our planning area is about 220 square miles. Our city is about 110, the city limits. Okay. So our planning area is bigger, obviously, than our the, and, but what's unique about Casa Grande is that we actually are our own entity. We don't meld into Tempe or meld into Chandler or, you know, touch Phoenix. We, we are 
our own entity. We, we don't really touch anybody. We touch Eloy, maybe. But yeah, that's interesting. And we have the tribes, tribe on the south, but we're, we're, the city limits are not to that quite yet. I think eventually they will be. They're building a new racetrack off of I-8 and Blanca Road. I don't know if you've heard about that, but it's uh, Tessa. And it will be open here by the end of the year. Really? Wow. Just the track. Just okay. the track. Got it. Well, then you have the, the, the Mortal Phoenix Mart that's been there empty for... Mortal. For I like the way you say mortal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there are some things about Casa Grande that are just sort of... You scratch your head and like, well, what happened there? Well, I will tell you that last week they reached out to us. Yeah. So they're not dead. Okay. <laughs> And, and, and just for our viewers and listeners, and what, what is the Phoenix Mart that's been Phoenix, empty, yeah, empty Phoenix for the for, better part of 10 six years? Six years, six years, seven years <laughs> now. Six. Yeah. Um, it, it was planned to be a sourcing center. So there are two s other sourcing centers in the world. One is in Dubai and the other is in China. Mm -hmm. And they are very large, like, shopping centers for industry. So as a sourcing center, you would go there to buy, if, uh, let's say I was, a, I was building a new Marriott hotel, and I'm the purchaser. I would go there, I could buy my pillows, my beds, all the silverware I might need, lights I might need, and you could actually see them, touch them, and then purchase them all in one spot. You don't have to travel all over the place. You could get your furniture there, you could, you could order everything from that one location. That, that's the concept. And it's been... It hasn't worked out so well <laughs> over the last six years. No. I'm guessing yeah. that with the uh, supply it's chain It's something issues, I don't like to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But with the supply chain issues, th I got to believe that there's that's probably why you got in the call. There's some renewed interest in, you know, tightening up these distribution Th There issues. is, and there's, and there's a lot of money out there, honestly, um, that th I'm seeing anyway from, from the city's perspective and, and investment perspective. Uh, even the... Even the Dreamport Village is back, which is that huge entertainment complex at I-8 and I-10. They're back. So uh -huh. they, all say, they all say they have money. Now, I'll believe it when I see it, because I'm a bit of, I'm not a skeptic normally, <laughs> but these two projects, I'm skeptic. I'm a skeptic. What, what happened to the, wasn't there supposed to be like a big water park or something That's like that? That's it. That, that was that's Dreamport it. Village. That's Dreamport yeah. Village. That's okay, it. then I'm remembering it correctly. Yeah. There's all these big plans that people come into Casa Grande with, and then they kind of fade. As, as reality sets in. Well, five, was it five years, five years ago, six years ago, I was talking to our city manager, Larry Raines, and I told him, and he, he and I agreed on this, but I, told, I said, if Larry, if one of these projects happen, we're golden. Yeah. So we did get one. We got lucid. Okay. <laughs> there, there you go. How long did that deal take to put together? Mm, gosh, a couple years probably. It's interesting because I think people probably don't recognize how much work goes into it was getting a, something here, and then it takes time for it to actually come about. It was a cooperative effort. It was a lot of work uh, from ACA, from the you know Arizona Commerce Authority, a lot of work from the county, and a lot of work from the city. So it was it was really a it was a group effort to get them uh, up to where they're at today. But once they once they broke ground. They, we literally had this plant operating within a year. That's amazing. Yeah. It, it is amazing. It's remarkable. <clears throat> and delivered their first cars within that year, actually. Yeah, that's incredible. What, what made you decide to become mayor? I mean, <laughs> of, of all the things. <laughs> that's the question I think I get asked the most. <laughs> I'm sure. I, Why would you want to put yourself in this position of... Being mayor of the great city of and and and, and live through a pandemic, right? And live through and and that, that's a great segue as as well, is yeah how how Casa Grande dealt with the pandemic and well issues around there. But but let's start like yeah. What, what made you want to become mayor? Well, after working for you for ten years, <laughs> you thought I it was, would be easier I was, than I that. Was I was prepared <laughs> for anything. How's that? <laughs> you taught me well, Chris. I don't know about that, but we. But it was a great ten years. It was. It was. It until was. the we, very end, we had we had a we had a good run. Yeah, we did. And uh, I had committed to work for you for ten years for for your company. And uh, after ten years, I retired, and that was thirty six years in the beer business. So I think wow. that that's long enough. 
Well, it even goes back farther than that because your father that's true officed in this very building. Yeah, in this, was that right? this very yeah. building. This this could and, have been his and, office right and, here. And his father was the DM, the district manager to my dad. No kidding. Oh yeah. This wow. is how this So back in nineteen seventy nine he transferred here from St. Louis and set up office in this building. And I, I think it's either on the fourth floor or the sixth floor, one of the two. So it's pretty, right it's pretty, That's yeah, incredible. it's pretty uh, ironic that here we are, you know, 40 yeah. uh, some odd years later. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he worked for Anheuser Bush for 30 years. So I've been part of the Anheuser Bush family probably since I was, I don't know, 10, That's eight, incredible. eight, maybe eight. Yeah. So long time. Yeah. But good, good run, good time. And I retired and we were sitting around a table talking with our current mayor who was termed out, he, he was gonna be done in a year. And so I raised my hand, I said, because you know, we were looking for volunteers <laughs> to become mayor. It was, it was the Casa Grande brain trust. It, right? was, it was, it was, especially what, what, at the time. Were you at the Desert Sands? Was no, no, <laughs> no, we were, we were not. We were in a conference room, so. Uh, but see, we I might have been having a beverage, you never know. <laughs> see, I would have thought it would have happened at the Desert Sands like most, most things do. Yeah, well. No, or did. it, didn't, it didn't happen there, but we we did. Uh, I volunteered basically, and so they said they would support me, and uh, the rest is kind of history. I've I've uh, this is my third term. Um, the mayor is in for uh, two year terms, and four max. So four okay. terms, you're termed out. So I can run one more time, and I've actually just announced that I am running again. So oh, um, congratulations. So Are like, you up oh, in? When's when's your election? Well, the primary will be in uh, August of twenty two. Okay, so he's the so same as. But you've been unopposed for all those I years. I have. I've been lucky that way. Yeah. Do um, you think, you think? I think it's because I raised too much money and nobody wanted to run against me. Do you think uh, you might have some competition this year? I might. There's somebody who's pulled a packet, so we'll see. I I'm not too concerned about him. I, I, although you know I'm going to pay attention. Sure. I think that. My track record's been pretty good. We've accomplished a lot. We've improved our communications with our education system. We're actually uh, we're actually collaborating with our education system, which we've never done before, because we have a separate elementary school district and a separate high school district, plus our charter schools, plus our Central Arizona College, uh, plus the universities. You know, so we're, I'm trying to. In fact, today I'm meeting with ASU. They're coming down to uh, talk about potential campus or yeah. collaborative effort with our technology and engineering and all the things we've got going. Uh, we think that we can offer them and their schools some opportunities for internships and other opportunities for employment even. Sure. So there's some great synergies I think that we can create and we've been able to do that through our elementary high school and Central Arizona College. So Central Arizona College has been a great partner of ours. We have this uh, Drive 48 technology center that was built with, with the help of ACA, uh, the city of Casa Grande, and CAC, Central Arizona College. So we've actually opened this training facility, it has robotics training in it, and it actually pr produces a certificate for an individual then that gets hired by Lucid. So Lucid actually will hire them directly from that program. Oh wow, yeah, that's great. That's tremendous. What, what do you think has been your biggest accomplishment as mayor? A lot of things. A lot of things. <laughs> Just a number of things. <laughs> There's yeah. so many. There's so many. Uh, w really, the collaborative effort with the school's education, because w one of the biggest draws on Casa Grande was that our schools weren't very good. Yeah. Uh, the other is that our hospital wasn't very good. Um, there was a, you know, we, we weren't getting builders to come in and build. It was just not, we, d we came out of the, the recession slow. Mm. And I came in right at the end of the recession. So I, I'm kind of the benefactor of the fact that the state kind of took off too. So I, I know that it wasn't all me, but uh, I like to take some credit for having to go out and really, literally, I went and met with every developer and every builder in the state of Arizona with my city manager. And we talked to them, we told them about Casa Grande, we told them about, the, about what we had to offer, uh, our location, you know, it's location, 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 and we have, we have that. And that, I think, then spurred the rest and brought attention to the city, which now we're seeing tremendous number of industries, industries coming in. We have 
the ancillary companies that are come in to support Lucid. We also have the ancillary companies that are supporting TSMC. Uh, we also have a new major manufacturer from the upper Midwest. It's a private company that will be coming in and hopefully we'll be able to announce here in about a week. And it's another, between all those, it's another 800 jobs besides the 6,000 at Lucid. Lucid. So yeah. it's just a tremendous amount of growth. And the big challenge we have today is to um, find new water, mm. get our infrastructure together, and get I-10 widened. And on the water piece, I mean, it's you had mentioned earlier in a, in a private conversation that that with the with the cutting back a cap, um, your farmers are actually going to have a, a rough time this year. They are. They're they're the first to, to get to to experience the cut from the Colorado uh, River. So the CAP or the Central Arizona yeah. Project, uh, they're they're going to be hit first. So they're going to lose about a third of their water, th starting in January. So we're we're they have other options. I mean, they can they can begin to pump groundwater, which they have the right to do. So s they'll they'll supplement some of that loss with groundwater, and then they'll probably fallow some of their fields. But they'll they're definitely going to feel the the first yeah. brunt of this water shortage. And I think the long term on the water, I, the Gila River Indian Res er, community has done a really good job of of building up their water allotment over the years. Um, well, they've, they've sued. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they've gotten it. But it's their right. It's the, they were, they were you know, obviously the courts agreed with them, and so they have uh, done a good job at acquiring their, their right, right to the water. So it's there, it's just gonna cost more. Yeah. So. There's some, there is some there, certainly. The, the Gila has a, b a big chunk of it, uh, but we also need to find new sources. So the Colorado is not gonna be the answer in the end. Right. Is it going to be desalinization? Is it going to be building a pipe from the Mississippi River over? I don't know. You know what the final answer will be. It may be a combination of, of those. But if Arizona is going to continue to grow, it's going to have to find a new source of water. Yeah, and there's there's so much runoff that goes flows into Castle Grant from the Tucson area that's not captured. <laughs> it's true. I All sense right. some uh, contention yeah, here. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We all we get is Tucson's dirt. Yeah, <laughs> it comes the in the form. But, but the water comes rights in the form of a haboob. Yeah, yeah but the right. water rights. I mean, we've had this discussion. The water rights are held by 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 farmers and by by the tribes, and so I mean, there's been no proactive water policy in Tucson for decades. There's there's no there's no reservoirs. There's no canals. There's nothing w where you could capture a lot of that, and a lot of it has to do with the rights are not in Tucson. They're downstream or upstream or whatever you want to say. Yeah, the farmers have, uh, unfortunately, don't have a good position on the CAP water. Yeah. They're like last. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're the ones getting cut first. M&I, which is municipal and industri industrial water, is probably a pretty high priority. It, it's, it's one of the higher ones. Uh, the tribes have, are top. Right. They're on the top of the, top of the priority list. Well, when you litigate, I mean, that's the way it goes. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they are... Uh, they would be the last ones to get cut. Yep. But we, you know, we'll f I, I'm confident we'll find a solution. I'm, I'm definitely confident we will find a solution on the water. Yeah. Well, in terms of infrastructure, too, we, we spoke earlier that, I mean, you've, the city of Casa Grande has been involved in some litigation here recently with regard to its... its well, its not the city, but the county. The yes. county. The, okay. yeah, the Pinal, Pinal county. Regional Transportation Authority, which actually I'm, I am the chairman of the Pinal Regional Transportation Authority. And so... Uh, the, the Goldwater Institute uh, sued the county and the PRTA uh, because we passed because that's cent. what the Goldwater Institute does because they, they sue because we passed sue. we passed a half cent sales tax so that we could build roads like like uh, Maricopa County does so the Maricopa area governments MAG mm -hmm. uh, has a half cent sales tax which I believe will be on your next ballot here in the city. Uh, to extend it because they they're at their end of the life of that tax but look what it's built 101 202 303 i mean it's if you didn't have that phoenix wouldn't be what it is today right so you know pinal county being the little brother to the south uh, we want to be like maricopa county maybe you not quite be, as big you don't want to be like pima county <laughs> no nobody no. wants to be pima county 
The People's Republic? Just, just, you just cross that border. You're in a different world. Hey, you're the one that left Tucson. It's hey, for a reason. There, there's, there's a lot of people leaving Tucson. They just, they just, I mean, they just passed a, a minimum wage uh, law in the city of Tucson, and it's gonna, it's gonna create some real issues going down between Tucson and Flagstaff. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be interesting. Everyone's, everyone's <laughs> centralizing. Centralizing, yeah. So yeah, anyway, so yeah. that so that that lawsuit is still pending. We've actually taken it through two different courts, and now it's in the Supreme Court. So we're waiting for the Supreme Court to make a decision. We, the rumor is, and I, I, this is purely a rumor, so take it for what it's worth, is that there's it's a three-three tie, and they're waiting for the fourth one to make a decision. And she's brand new on the on the court, so she's going through all the documents and reviewing this this is again rumor right so i'm hoping that she sees fit to be that fourth yes vote so that we can move on and use the money that we've been collecting so and yeah. if they say no and how, how do we how do we give the money back yeah, yeah how much money have you collected it's about 73 million dollars 73 million dollars that, <laughs> we, that we could be building and roads with on a yeah. sales tax on a half cent uh, just, half cent sales no tax. way you can give that back i mean no. there's no possible way you can you can equitably return the money. This seems goofy. And what what is the Goldwater Institute's argument, or what has been their argument? Uh, there's two pieces to it. One is that they don't believe that the pamphlet, the voter pamphlet, um, explained what the tax w was really all about, which is not true. But that was one of their arguments. The other is that the county doesn't have the right to establish a variable rate. So a half cent sales tax up to a certain amount and then it goes down from there. So car dealerships, personal high dollar property items don't get taxed after $5,000, right? So $5,000 was, was that variable tax right. position. You, you put a ceiling on it. Cities can do it because city of Cascadundi has one. We have a variable tax rate and sales tax rate, but apparently counties cannot or they're not allowed, it's not specific. So so that's one of the caveats that they, they sued on. So this could have some policy implications. Yeah, it absolutely could. In, in addition wide. to just the, the, uh, the Well, money. certainly Arizona-wide. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you gotta think there's there's other municipi municipalities across the, across the country that use the same. Well, you're talking about the state Supreme Court, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so, COVID, what was your initial reaction to what was going on early on and then how did things develop? What, how did you respond as a, as a city and as a community? Well, it was, it was difficult because we really didn't know what we were dealing with. And you know, when, when it first happened, probably March, two years ago, this, this March, it'll be two years, mm -hmm. You know, the governor came out and, you know, infections were spiking and everything was, was happening and we were trying to figure out what to do. And the governor came out and said, well, all right, if you guys want to do a mandate, a mask mandate, then you cities and towns do what you want to do or in counties do what you want to do. So probably 90% of us uh, passed a man, you know, or issued a mask mandate. Again, not, not really knowing what we we're dealing with. And it really came down to uh, you know watching it go up and watching it go down, then watching it go up again. You know the infections then really spiked in January, and then 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 the vaccines came out. And once the vaccines came out, it dropped like a rock. Now it, then it's now it's spiking again, uh, but now it's dropping, but it's dropping much slower. Mm -hmm. It's 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 more of a gradual decline. So I think that what's happening is, you know, we're getting to that herd immunity point where uh, it's it's much better today than it was. And I think people are, number one, people are tired of it. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're sick of the, the whole thing. And uh, I am one of them. <laughs> and so it's, you know, it's been interesting to watch. I mean, for example, Halloween in, in the city of Cascadundi was huge this year. I mean, yeah. everybody came out. We had a, an event at our park 
there had been 2,000 people at this event. Like a our, trick or treat? Park. Yeah, costume contests, mm -hmm. uh, booths, games. And uh, there, there were probably 300 kids, three and under, in the costume contest. Wow. It was, it was insane. But it was good to see. It was good yeah. to see everybody getting out and, and everybody kind of feeling good about where they were and what they were doing. You know, and, and in the end, when, when the mask mandates were rescinded, really it was the governor who rescinded them. He, which, which quite frankly, I was pissed at him for because he let us take the blame for issuing the mask mandate and he took the credit for taking it and off. Taking it off. Yeah. Yeah. And he could have said, hey, all right, it's time to take it off. And we would have we done that. But then we would have taken it off, right? We could have looked like we knew what we were doing instead right. of him taking over. So. I'm not real happy with Doug Ducey right now. Well, I mean, but that had a lot to do with what was going on in down south with all sorts of mandates and curfews and that the state was fighting. So well, I'm not defending yeah. I'm not defending the governor per se, but but the, but, the he, but he could have taken the lead then, right? Yeah. He could have he could have come in and at the beginning and said, "All right, we're going to issue a, ma a statewide mask mandate." And then he could have come in at the end and not leave that up to the mayors. Cuz what when he did is he left it up to 91 different people. Right. Yeah. When he, when he probably should have just done it himself. When we, when just, we all know this is just one mayor's opinion. So when we all know that just masks don't work. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. What? How? How impacted? I'm not. Were you're you? not. I'm not going there. You're not going to yeah. go no, there. I'm not going okay. there. That's fine. It was. It, it was. I threw the line out. If you're not going to okay. get the uh, <laughs> what? What was the impact on on small or any businesses in 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 your city? Is it a city or a town? City, city right? Yeah. We're a city. We're a charter city. So the city of Cascadunda has been a charter city since uh, 17, oh, not 17, 18, 19, 1917. 1917, okay. So uh, we were founded in 1875 and, and incorporated in 1917. And so uh, as a charter city, you know, just just in terms of, I mean, well, what kind of the operates? Well, the, what the... The the question is that in the city of Cascarini, what cost of what uh, what impact did you have on the businesses with the COVID? Did, was w did you have any that closed for good? Did, was we it did. We had some restaurants that closed, and some other smaller rest smaller businesses that closed. It's it really was if if you weren't doing very well to begin with, you you probably ended up closing. I think the long term impact is still to be felt. I don't. I don't know that we're totally out of the woods in terms of business and business openings, closings. We're fortunate because we have a lot of new ones coming in. Mm -hmm. um, everything from a Texas Roadhouse to you know some uh, a, a Latino you know, ice cream parlor. So new businesses are coming. Some have closed. So we haven't really the net net of it is we actually have more opening. Good. So for us, it's not the benefit been of being a, huge a growth area. Yeah. True. That's true. So not, not, not really knowing, and we don't have tourism, so tourism really wasn't uh, an effect on us. Uh, ag is a big industry in our, in our community. It never shut down. Uh, the city never shut down. Right. Uh, our industries, the only one that really got hurt was Hexel, and that was because of the airlines. They're a big supplier of uh, parts to planes, so that, that hurt them. Right, yeah. Frito-Lay was working overtime. Frito-Lay was working overtime. Abbott, was, Abbott was working overtime. Well, yeah, yeah they have. Abbott has the leading um, home testing kit. That's you right. Know, you can't find it. You got to you got to order it ahead of time and hope that it shows up in your it, on your doorstep. Yeah, which is great. I mean, it's you it, need it's to come amazing. down to our CBS, Chris. We have a whole stack. Oh, of them. Stack. I, do you really? <laughs> because you can't find them here. You have to order them from the CBS warehouse. Yeah. I'm not. I just made that order the other day. Oh. Well, I can pick you up some if you want. Oh, sure. There <laughs> you go. There you go. Just go to the warehouse. The uh, I, you, you talked about being up for election. I, I think it's it's smart for you to, you know, you had somebody pull a packet. It's smart to you to, for you to keep an eye on that. Because what you don't want to have happen is what happened to the state Senate president in New Jersey on oh, Tuesday. Yeah. So this is the Senate president in the New Jersey legislature was beaten by a Republican who had spent $153, <laughs> a truck driver. <laughs> the guy, you know, I who knows? I, I'll have to look and see how much the, the senator had in his bank account when he lost. But I'm over, sure it was, I, There was over a million. It was over a million? Yeah. Yeah. 
remarkable. There was there was some commentary about what was he doing with a million bucks and what where to where to go. Well, and I'm sure it was they we weren't taking this guy seriously because he's a truck driver and he didn't spend any money. So well, I mean, think in Virginia, didn't the uh, Democratic governor, the sitting governor, spend like three times more than the his the one who won? Yeah, the the, the, the Charlie yeah. McAuliffe was yeah outspent the Republican three to one significantly. Was, yeah. So. Once again, money does not decide elections. That's, that's right. It's that's decided right. on the ground. So I mean, so those those, you know, table meetings at, at out, out there in, in, in Casa Grande, meeting with meeting with the uh, the dairy people like you do, and being out in the community means a lot. I get out in the community a lot. Yeah. And they know my number. Yeah. And they're not afraid to call. Oh, that's at good. all hours <laughs> of the day. All the time. <laughs> In the grocery store, in the restaurant, yeah, everywhere, uh, everywhere. Well, but, but that that comes from you know your 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 history, right? Making friends. That's is our true. Business. That's true. So you're out there making friends. That's true. I I I try to. I try to listen. Also, that's a, an important part. Well, it's not a partisan job. I mean, as much, and we talked about this earlier a little bit. I mean, you have nonpartisan elections in Castle Grand. Correct. Um, you're you're a longtime believer in one party, but but you're mayor of the people of Casa Grande. You've got to right. deal with the issues that are there. That's correct. And uh, it's really, as I always say, city government is where the rubber meets the road. It's where the services that affect the people the most happen. And if the cities and towns aren't looking after their community, nobody else will. Yeah. That's a great point. Awesome. Well, point. we'll uh, we'll definitely want to have you back as we get closer to the election. You can update on what's happening, and we we really appreciate you taking and this the time. and this new company that's coming in from the Midwest. That's right. Yeah. I, I hopefully I can uh, another about it another that company I, for for. Well, Casa we'll, what we'll do is we'll tweet this episode with that announcement once that happens. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Again, I mean, if it's if it's happening this it. week or uh, next probably week next week next week. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm ho I'm hoping we it's we're. we're Finalizing the development agreement and some other stuff. So once that's Lord done, then they'll then they'll start to close on the property. And once they do that, then we're we're home. All that's around great. pins and needles. Thank you, Mayor, for being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank so you. Much thank for you coming. both. Appreciate thank your friendship. Always yeah. appreciate you. Uh, Always good seeing you, Chris. Yeah, it is good. It's Tell great your family you. I said hello. I will absolutely. Great. Great. Thanks, everybody. Bye. -bye.